everything you need to know about Eco Atlantic, the Dubai of Africa. Hello, the explorers. Welcome to another informative video presented to you as always by the explorer. It is no secret that we all enjoy the experience of spreading our legs along a white sanded beach while sipping a glass of naturally pressed juice as a beautiful breeze from the ocean blows our hair and watch in the horizon the most exotic neighborhoods Dubai can offer. But then it is definitely not a secret that most of us cannot afford traveling to Dubai to have that dream vacation. But then Eco Atlantic seems to be filling that void for us. Imagine a megapolis rising, Atlantis-like, from the sea, which boasts thriving businesses and residential districts to help transform not just a city, but an entire country. The Eco-Atlantic project in Lagos, Nigeria, has become one of the most dazzling and most discussed construction developments in the entire world, which intends to build a city shooting afloat the Atlantic Ocean. In this video, we shall look into everything you need to know about the exotic Eco-Atlantic commonly thought to be the Dubai of Africa. But then, if you are new here, welcome, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Eco-Atlantic, officially Nigeria International Commerce City, also known as Eco-Atlantic City or the initials EAC and EA, is a planned city of Lagos State, Nigeria being constructed on land reclaimed from the Atlantic Ocean. Upon completion, the new peninsula is anticipating at least a 250,000 residence capacity and a daily flow of 150,000 commuters. The development is also designed to help in stopping the erosion of Lagos State's coastline. The city adjoins Victoria Island District of Lagos City and the Phase 1 area of Lakey to the north, while the entire western, eastern and southern borders is a coastline. Eco-Atlantic is expected to rise as the next generation of property on the African continent, having a total of 10 districts spread across a land area of approximately 10 square kilometers. The city will satisfy needs for financial, commercial, residential and tourist accommodations. Eco-Atlantic development has been carried out as a public-private partnership with private companies and investors providing the funding, whilst Lagos State Government is a strategic partner with the support of the federal government. The contractors are China Communications Construction Group, a company that works in the field of marine dredging and landfill operation. Consultants are Royal Hans Corning with trafficking and transport expertise and AR plus H Architects. South Energy X Limited, a subsidiary of the Chaguri Group, was specifically created to undertake the development. Testing of the sea defense system took place at the DHI Institute in Copenhagen, Denmark where models were successfully tested for 1 in 100 year ocean surges and 1 in 120 year, 1 in 150 years and 1 in 1000 year storms. Overview 100 years ago, the area of land on which the new city will be built was a beach, but time and mother nature had erased all but the trees. The coastal erosion had become so serious that Victoria Island, a suburb of Lagos, was in danger of serious flooding and it was feared that those who lived near the water's edge would be forced to leave their homes. Steps were taken to protect the shoreline, but then a grander plan emerged to reverse the erosion, reclaim 10 square kilometers of land and build a clean and eco-friendly city that would help ease the burden of Lagos, the biggest city in Africa's fastest growing economy, and offer employment and opportunity to its 17 million citizens. Work began in 2006, dredging the first few thousands of what will eventually be approximately 140 million tons of sand, making it currently the biggest land reclamation site in the world. The Eco Atlantic City project received global attention in 2009 as the Lagos State Government and its private sector partners on the project, South Energy X, received the Clinton Global Initiative Commitment Certificate. Eco Atlantic will satisfy needs for financial, commercial, residential, and tourist accommodations with infrastructure in line with modern environmental standards. These standards will offer the city's residents water, waste management, security and transportation systems. The city will also have an independent source of energy generated specifically for the city. The Eco-Atlantic City Master Plan indicates that the city will contain seven districts which include harbour lights, business districts, marina, downtown, avenues, eco-drive and ocean front. The Progress Report of the City 
As of May 2009, while the project was still in its dredging phase, about 3 million cubic meters had been sand filled and placed in the reclamation area, while about 35,000 tons of rock had been delivered to the site. In certain parts of Bar Beach, the land being reclaimed can already be seen. Dredges are working around the clock to fill the site with sand, to ensure the Atlantic Ocean does not return for what it wants to. The developers have designed an 8 km long barrier to keep the sea at bay. This has become known as the Great Wall of Lagos and is being built on the same place as the water's edge a hundred years ago. A fleet of more than a hundred vehicles, 50 of them Volvo trucks, have been tasked with transporting the needing stones through the 161 km return journey between the job site and a granite quarry at Ibadan from dawn to dusk to deliver 700 tons of stone. These are powered 15 meter high and topped with concrete acropods, huge geometrical objects designed to resist waves on coastal structures. Given the staggering amount of concrete the project requires, the site has its own factory to produce it, and the project employs more than 1,200 staff directly linked to the construction of the project to operate and maintain the excavators, howlers, and other machinery. The biggest suppliers of machines with more than 40 on site and several more at the quarry digging and moving rocks is Volvo. At Eco Atlantic, there are excavators digging trenches for drainage and sewage, howlers moving rocks and sand, and a motor grader to maintain the roads on the site. The operators and other staff have to work in searing heat, with temperatures often topping 40 degrees Celsius. This can cause choking clouds of sand and dust, though a specifically adapted A25 howler fitted with a water tank helps dampen and cool the sands to prevent such build-ups. Then, in the rainy season, they have to work in lashing rain and torrential storms. The working conditions are generally tough, but then great projects emerge from the worst conditions and this one has caused land to emerge where there was once water. Despite the harsh conditions, the wall is growing by 3 meters each day and at its furthest points where the road ends and the waves lash against the rocks and the soil, EC460 BLC Volvo Excavator battles with nature, tasked with settling the stones that form the wall's core. The machine has carried out 5,400 hours of work in two years without any unplanned downtime. George Talk, the group plant manager at Eco Atlantic, in explaining the need for the machinery says, Where that machine works is a very difficult area. You have to deal with rocks, sand, salty water, and salty air. All these factors create lots of damage to a machine, but with a good support and a thorough maintenance schedule, that machine has coped. On 21st February 2013, a dedication ceremony was held at the reclaimed land of Eco Atlantic with Good Luck Jonathan, Bill Clinton, Babatunde Fashola, Bola Tinubu, Aminu Tambuwal, and Ibunkule Amosun attending. In March 2014, David Frame, managing director of South Energy X Nigeria Limited, the firm responsible for the development, confirmed that the first residential tower will open in 2016. Controversies the Eco Atlantic project has been criticized by local residents living nearby, saying that ongoing construction works have caused coastal erosion and ocean surges, as ocean water surges through living areas, flooding access roads and taking down electricity poles and forcing residents to relocate. The Lagos State Government is also being criticized for failing to involve the people in the project. In August 2012, the Atlantic Ocean surged and overflowed its banks, sweeping 16 people in the Atlantic Ocean killing several people and flooding Kuramo Beach, Victoria Island and other areas. According to an environmental expert, the ocean surge occurred as a result of the failure of the contractors handling the sand filling activities of the proposed Atlantic Ocean City to put in place measures that would reduce the effect of the surge on the environment. The Lagos State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party issued an official statement blaming the ACN, now APC, led state government sand filling for the ocean surge. The party called for a stop to the Eco Atlantic project and immediate compensation to the bereaved families. Despite all these controversies, difficulties, and challenges, the progress on the Eco Atlantic city are extraordinary and will set not only Nigeria but the African continent on a new phase in the infrastructure and real estate primes. Upon completion, this city will take the cover pages of all stakeholders in this sector as well as bring about a boost in the tourism industry in Nigeria. So, while we wait for completion, let's pack our bags and get ready to splash the futuristic Dubai of Africa, Eco Atlantic City. There you have it, explorers. That was everything you needed to know about Eco Atlantic. 
Thanks for watching this video. And if you did enjoy this video, do well to give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.